back, all you geek enthusiasts and nerd aficionados to Malice Corp. We've got a special quick edition. Uh, I, I'm Beacon, as you know. Um, S5150 couldn't be here to join us for this particular conversation, but I do have our founding father, Mr. Jack Malice. And massive Flash fan. True. So t tonight's quick nerd rant is all about The Flash. So if you haven't watched... Tonight's episode, episode 20, um, I, what's the name of the episode? Like, I know who you are or something Whoa, like that. Oh, Jack's mind is what the name of the episode Okay, yeah, don't, don't, don't watch, don't watch any more of this. Go watch Flash first and then come back and watch this because this is just a total rant on the show. Um, spoilers will be coming. Um, so I'll start off by telling you I was not pleased with this episode. I wrote an article the other day. Uh, about who is Savitar and just giving you a bunch of different theories about who Savitar might be, including uh, he may be uh, Reverse Flashy Barthon, he could be Barry from the Future, he could be Julian, he could be Ronnie Raymond, could be Hunter Zulliman or Zoom, or maybe even uh, Jay, Jay, so could be him. <laughs> Uh, we find out in this episode, it is... And I was right! It is Barry Allen. Future Barry Allen from the same freaking timeline. And so I'll start off by saying the issue that I have with this whole thing is <laughs> I, I'm wondering at what point is the CW going, CW writers actually going to stick to comic source material on this because in no universe in no timeline in no earth would Barry Allen ever kill Iris West like it's it's not something that's going to ever happen in the comics so just the even thought that he could become this evil speedster Savitar and come back to kill Iris so that he ensures himself to become Savitar one it's a paradox in itself obviously caused by Flashpoint yep you nailed it right but there. I'll let you go. Oh, no. I agree. There is no universe, no Earth, no comic, no nothing that could get Barry to do this. They just, it's just, it's yeah. not, not something that's going to happen. Except Flashpoint. He broke, yeah. he, he broke it. He yeah. created this huge paradox going back and in, into back in time, trying to save his mother. He created a huge paradox. And that's what we're dealing with now is this broken timeline. And that's what the, 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 the CW writers are trying to do is show that he broke the timeline by going back into time and he's changed everything. He's changed everything. He's broken it to the point where now it has to be fixed. And how do we fix it? How does he fix it? Yeah. The, you know, the other big issue that I have with this season so far is the story arc is supposed to be, it should be really very understanding the mistakes that he's made and finally owning up to these mistakes in order to fix them. Right. But we've now yeah. spent 20 episodes of him not doing that and him continuously allowing others to accept responsibility for his actions and his just, you know, half-assed approach to accepting responsibility for just completely screwing people's lives over well, you got to. Um, where's the remorse? You know, they're, they're they're trying to hold to the Flash of the comics and the animated series because the Flash has always been kind of a immature character. Not, I don't mean story wise. I mean the character himself has always been very immature. His behavior, you know, he, how he how he he reacts to things. He's always a good guy, but he always has a very immature reaction to things. And that's why I think they're writing this Barry the way they are. They're trying to make him more heroic, but they're still trying to hold on to some of the nuances of him still being just a kid and being very immature in his decision-making processes. So do I agree with it and think it's car it's comic book canon? No, but it is a nice twist. And I, I, I like the way they're going with it. I I, I enjoy this incarnation of, uh, of Barry. I like him. He's heroic. He's 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 everything you want out of a, out of a superhero. But he still makes mistakes, and he's still got some of that immaturity, and he still makes bad decisions, and he's got to deal with it. And I think they've done a really good job of writing it that way. 
You know what I mean? They can't write him like they do in the comic books and have it conducive to a television show. They had to do something different, and they did, and it works. I like it. I don't know. That sure, just and I, get, being... I, get, I get creative license. Totally understand creative license, and we don't it... – I'll also say it this way. If the story is good enough as is, then tell the damn story. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, there's nothing wrong with telling a good story. And, you know, sometimes I think the writers try to put their own little nuances and twists on things when it's already a good story. Just tell it. You Just gotta, tell gotta, it. You gotta think. They're trying to keep oh. guys like me that are huge Flash fans that know the, the story arcs. And they want to keep us engaged. They want to make us interested. They want to bring us into it. Right. And that's what they're doing. They've literally threw me. <laughs> Boom! Boom! I would... It's like, I thought, you know, I would expect it to be Wally West before Barry Allen. You know what I mean? You know, you, you, right. <laughs> I, I think in my article, I even wrote like, it could be future Barry, but that doesn't make any sense. And I guess, I guess I, that's where I should have stopped and gone. Then it's got to be Barry because CW writers rarely make sense in some of the things they do, well, and the that, reasons that they do it. There was, there was I, I, I get where you're coming from. Well, there was stuff that they dropped, like you were talking about earlier, that, that, that you know, Reverse Flash said that I'm not even your biggest enemy. Yes. And uh, when, when yes. Samson says, I am the future Flash, that's a huge tip-off. He's like, right. I am the Flash of the future. He's telling Barry, I am you. You are me. Right. It's like, Phew. now that I, I, I now that they did the reveal, all that stuff – is just clicking in my head going, oh, they already told us they were going to do this, that, that this was what was going on back in episode, what, three or four of this season? Something like that, yeah. I just wish that that if if this was the direction they were going to go into, why couldn't we have this three episodes ago or four episodes ago, which would have really allowed that character development of Barry to to really get somewhere. But now, what, he's got to make this this – move towards that responsibility I'm talking about. He's got to get there in three episodes. They may you know not I mean? the season. That would be an amazing cliffhanger for them to leave the season. I would be pissed. I would be mad. I would be <laughs> dying for the rest. Well, I'd be like, ah, ah, to the show comes back. You know what I mean? I'd be like sitting there going, ah, I did that. But that would be a hook that would be to the point where what are you doing? You know what I mean? It's like yeah, yeah. They, that would be they would be setting us up for an off season of pain and agony, you know, while yeah. we're all sitting there going, "What's going to happen?" Well, I still think that that question's still out there. Is like, what what's going to happen with this Flash Arrowverse right now? That's going on. Like, even if they stop Savitar, even if he stops him from killing Iris, like, where are we going with this story? You know, are we going to a crisis on Infinite Earth? Are we going <laughs> down that road? I, I, Which, I, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm all for it, but I don't I, know how I, we. I don't know if if, if how we get let them do Infinite Earth on CW, but oh my God, would that be epic or what? Well, but they let them do Flashpoint, which, which is my favorite Fla Flashpoint Paradox. If you've seen the cartoon, uh, oh, yes, yeah, the, the, the animated, animated movie is fantastic, and it's very, it's very, like to the canon like it's it's spot oh, yeah. on and I mean, it's fantastic and so when i saw this i heard start, that i was like point, right, uh, i was like oh no they're gonna, ruin it. they're gonna ruin it yeah they're gonna ruin it and i loved it it was to me the best series of er, set of episodes that they did i love it yeah i i love i just love flashpoint paradox but Ah, time travel too. We're gonna have to get into a different conversation at some point about time well, travel because normally, normally to me, I hate time the time travel trope. I hate the whole shtick. You know what I mean? It's it's always seemed to be lazy writing to me. Whenever somebody throws, oh, we're just go back in time and fix things. You know what I mean? I always it's like <laughs> you're just being lazy and, and don't know how to get yourself out of the situation. So you're gonna throw time travel in there. Right. And we're gonna go. We're gonna go fix it. But it's always been part of Flash. It's it's like you can't have yes. Doctor Who without time travel. You can't have Flash without time travel. I mean, right, right. And to me, they're doing a good job with it. They're not using it as a crutch. They're using it as a plot device, and it's it's part of the story. You know what I mean? It's not a crutch for them to say, "Well, we don't know how to get out of the situation, so we're just going to have the Flash go back in time and fix it." 
Yeah, it's not it's not a retcon tool. <laughs> no, <laughs> yet, and, yet. And the they, they, yet. they the way they wrote it in there is going back in time breaks stuff, makes it worse than it is to begin with. So they've kind of shot themselves in the foot with that, and they can't use it as a way to get out of it now because they've already proven in their own story arc that time travel is bad and it breaks things. Yeah. You know, the other interesting thing that I was you know, just thinking of when we were talking about time travel is where, where does where is DC's Legends of Tomorrow going to now fit into the Arrowverse? Because the ending of DC Legends is the timeline is completely just screwed. Yeah. Completely screwed. Like dinosaurs living in modern time and stuff. I mean, it's just completely bananas. Well, I'm not kind of. I haven't seen. I haven't seen how do you bring it all together? Well, it's oh, well. Spoiler. Yeah, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's messed up. Okay, it's messed up. Um, well, yeah. So take, just interesting. Um, it's going to take all of the writers from all three shows sitting down and 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 writing together. The worst thing they could possibly do is have each group write their own story and try to fit it in at the end. Hopefully, this arc is all building together, and they've built it together as one piece, and they've all worked together and fleshed it all out. Because if they're going to try to patch it together at the end, it's going to cause it could cause one show to fail. It could cause all show all three shows yeah. to have a terrible ending, or it could cause one of them to be amazing and the other two to fall apart. I, right. I, I don't know. I'm hoping that they're all working together as a group. But yeah, it's just it's it's odd when you have two time travel shows uh, in the same universe as four different. DC shows now, so it's kind oh, of yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's kind of screwed. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, Supergirl too. Yeah, so. well, Supergirl though, she falls, in, she's in a different Earth, so they can kind of, they don't really yeah. have to. She's what Earth three now is what they're trying to say. So yeah, she's Earth three, so they they can keep her separate still at some point, but or is he Earth five? I, I, well, I don't know. I I lose track. I, who's from Earth 16 or 19 or whatever HR is. <laughs> Which, by Dave Cavanaugh, by the way, we love you. <laughs> He's oh. just amazing. <laughs> I loved him in this episode, too, by the way. Oh, yeah. He, he, and they're, they're giving him more screen time, which I love. I, 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 yeah. And you know, he directed, I loved, he directed the last, not this episode. I don't yeah, know if he directed this one, but he directed the one before it. And it was great. I mean, one, the yeah, the, was fought on. I loved it. Yeah, yeah, the past, future, the I'm ones in my the future, family. Flash, or whatever. Yeah. yeah, the one thing I loved about this episode with HR is I loved the line that that Joe gave when they're all sitting in there. He's he says something along the lines of like, "Is HR really our best closer?" When you know Joe and Barry are sitting in the car outside the coffee shop, and HR is in there with the science yeah. lady. I can't remember He's her name. Our best already. closer, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm that messed up, and he goes, "Is he really our best closer?" And I'm just like, "Oh God, it's HR, dude. The guy's a, a nut job, but he's he's amazing at the same time." Well, yeah, HR is a nut job, I, I, but he plays that character so perfectly. I mean, we've already had this conversation. He just kind of whatever they give him, he plays it to a T, and it doesn't matter. And he can go from, you know, uh, what is it, uh, Earth Three's uh, uh, Wells, who's straight laced and 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 and, and, and Stuff or two, um, yeah, the, two, the yeah. real serious, serious. And then he just, yeah. and and then he just goes into you know HW. It's like, ah, oh, I love and the guy. Complete, complete nut job. Yeah. Um. You know, the other thing I really liked about this episode was, you know, I'm a big character development guy. I think it just comes from my literature background, and um, I love I love good storytelling. And I love good character development, and Joe's character really made some progress in this episode. He made some huge, huge yeah, he took, progress. He took, his, he took his wedding ring off. That was mind blowing. To me too. Right. I'm like, I was like sitting there going, and then I'm not so much an effects guy. You know what I mean? I enjoy it. I'm, I'm like you. I like the character development. I, I really want characters to grow and I want to see something, you know, new and, and, and see some kind of new, I don't like exposition for exposition sake, but I, I want the characters to have a reason and I don't want to just sit there and go, Oh, that's a pretty cool explosion, blah, blah, blah. I, I, I don't like that. But the Killer Frost effect for a television show, oh. I was like... The, oh. the surfing on the ice? The yeah, ice I'm surfing? Like, oh, fantastic. Crap. I'm like, for a television show, they pulled out the stops on this one. It didn't look cheesy. It didn't look corny. It didn't look overdone. I was like, 
It brought you know what it brought back is Iceman Saturday morning Iceman yes. cartoon. Yes, that's exactly what it looked like. That ice surfing. Yes. And I was like, Killer Frost is now my new favorite villain. She's 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 awesome. You know. She's hot. She's cold. <laughs> she surfs on ice. I mean. Well, I I did. I, we've had this conversation. I don't particularly care for the Caitlyn Snow character. I always thought she was kind of banal and flat, and there wasn't all they weren't doing a whole lot with her. But as Killer Frost, she's awesome. I mean, yeah, she's dynamic. It's really letting that actress. Well, what's we, her name? Uh, uh, Danielle. Uh, Danielle Panavaker. Yeah, Panav It's letting Panav her show off some of her skills now. You know what I mean? Because I always thought they kind of underwrote her. You know what I mean? It's just. Actually, she was just that that nerdy, you know, <laughs> Felicity kind of kind of character, right? Yeah, but I mean, they underutilized the, it. Super they nerd doctor, it. but yeah. Um, you know, the last thing I, I want to say about this episode, when because I'm stuck on character development, man, is what about Cisco? We've seen from Cisco now in this episode. We saw him take a huge leap of really accepting responsibility for the His dude's power. got amazing, amazing powers. And it yeah. reminds me of last episode, if you remember when Barry leaves fu the future, and the last thing he says to Cisco is he says, you're an amazing superhero. And yeah. he, you know, then he, he leaves. And that's the first time that Barry's ever recognized, verbally recognized to Cisco that he's a superhero. Now, he probably should have said that to past Cisco, too. Maybe that would have <laughs> jumped, that would have kickstarted him, but it took Julian, you know, it took Draco Malfoy <laughs> to kick him. Oh. <laughs> to, get, to kick him in the rear and get him going, man. Well, you see, you know, I, I have mixed feelings about the whole vibe character because in the comics, he's not a hero. He's not a hero. He's. It's very hard to even call him an anti-hero in the comics. You know what I mean? He's. He's a villain that has a moral code. You know. But I like this iteration. I like this Cisco. I, I, yeah, I like this Cisco Ramon, man. Cisco I mean, Ramon. I like and that's hard for me to say. Somebody that's like, Vibe's not a good guy. <laughs> he's not a good guy. No, he's he really is the heart. I, I mean, when you talk about like the heart of a, a, of a series or of a cast, like he's really the heart of that team. Um, and we really saw it in the last episode where he goes to the future, and Cisco's the one that's like, I was trying to bring the team back together. I tried oh, my hard. He's not in this episode too. He was still the glue. Yeah. In, it's just really hard for me to sit there and reconcile that with the vibe I know from comic books. You right. know what I mean? It's like, but that's not vibe. But yeah, it's it's at least the vibe I know and, and I've read, and I never took him as that kind of character. But this vibe and this Cisco Ramon is the glue that holds everything together. Yeah, that's true. Totally true. Well, that's Flash for you. Well, I'm sure we will have more because obviously the season's not over. We've got three episodes to come. Uh, make sure you get out and you watch this. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Please, please, please like, subscribe, share. Um, we'll have to have more little nerd rants like this. I know Arrow's coming back on tomorrow. Um, so I'm excited to see what, what goes down with that. We've got an article that I just released this morning with some, uh, this to all you Malcolm Merlin fans like myself, uh, a, with the news that dropped right, about dude. John Barrowman. It's terrible, terrible. Breaks my heart. Dude, dude, it's just, well, the things that, and that's kind of, I think where my angst is coming from in, with CW in general is, is what the writers have done to that character as well. And just the, the travesty that is like just lessening the impact of Malcolm Merlin in the Arrowverse. I mean, Arrow is a story about Oliver Queen, yes, but it's just as much a story about Malcolm Merlin, and it's, it has been since the beginning, and to just cut him out of it, uh, well, allegedly cut him out of it, is just... Uh, well, you're, you're man, more they, of an, they better uh, do him right. fan than I am. And we're kind of getting off, off plot a little bit here, or a little off rant here, but you're a bigger Green Arrow fan than I am. But I yep. always thought Malcolm Merlin was pretty much... The, the the foil for 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 arrow in most of the yeah. like the main bad guy it's like yeah, the joker like for the batman devil, man. yeah absolutely it. absolutely he he is oliver's biggest threat and on par for him when it comes to skill and agility and just that you know that that fight the oliver versus malcolm merlin versus the magician fight is the most epic in the green arrow 
series, in my opinion, you know, in my humble nerd opinion. Um, but anyway, check it out tomorrow. Let's see what happens. I'm willing to give it a shot, just like I am with Flash. I'm not giving up. Um, I may be mad now, but it, hey, they've they've thrown in some surprises every once in a while. And we'll see what happens with Flash. We'll see what happens with Arrow. Um, and we'll be talking to you soon. Um, again, make sure you like, subscribe, follow us on Twitter, uh, follow us on Facebook, of course. Um, check out the website, malice-corp.com, for all things nerd. Check out all the articles. We got some great, great Star Wars stuff coming up, too, for May the 4th. So definitely be checking out the website this week. And until next time, stay nerdy out there. <laughs>